burglars and pre-K. How much more benefit could average people in Alabama realize from that kind of public investment uh, versus just cutting out a one-time check? It is pre-K registration time. Alabama first class pre-K registration for the 2023-24 school year opened on January 15th and may be completed on the Alabama Department of Early Childhood Education's website. All children in Alabama who will be four years of age by September 1st of 2023 are eligible to register. Students will be selected via random drawing at the local site level. Yes, random drawing which I'll get to in just a moment. So it's a good time to remind folks that Alabama's first class pre-K program is really successful. Over the past 15 years, while Alabama has ranked at or near the bottom on virtually every quality of life metric, the pre-K program has been at or near the top. From the Alabama School Readiness Alliance, quote, Researchers from UAB and the Public Affairs Research Council of Alabama have followed the progress of students through eighth grade and found that regardless of zip code, demographics, or school, first class pre-K graduates are more likely to be proficient in reading and math on state assessments, while less likely to be chronically absent from school, to be held back a grade, to need special education services, and to have a serious disciplinary issue. Pretty, pretty good research, I would say. Here's the problem. Only 45% of the state's four-year-olds are actually enrolled in the program. So we have this successful program, yet less than half of Alabama's families have access to it. Meanwhile, you have legislators like Senator Arthur Orr, for example, discussing a $500 million tax rebate. But for less money than that, we could expand pre-K to be available to 100% of Alabama's four-year-olds. Imagine how much better our state could be with just this one investment. Thousands of children would directly benefit in multiple ways. Thousands of families would get help with childcare, reducing their bills or freeing them to work more hours or different hours or re-enter the workforce. Think about the job creation with the hiring of additional teachers and assistants in every county of the state, including some of the most uh, impoverished parts of our state that have very little economic development. And there you have the ripple effects across local economies, right? These pre-K teachers, the assistants, now that they are in place in some of these areas, they're going to be spending money in these areas, they're going to be shopping, they're going to be paying bills, paying taxes, etc., etc. Meanwhile, less of our young people will start elementary school behind, and we can actually make a real difference in the achievement gap. Every child and every family in Alabama deserves high quality, free pre-kindergarten. It's the right thing to do for young people and their families. It's the right thing to do for our public education system. And it's the right thing to do for our communities and our economies. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and that's such that, that's such a an important thing to note about because every you know, when we mentioned this during the, the Madison City Council meeting uh, uh, updates, the one of the con uh, one of the concerns about the community center was opportunity cost, opportunity cost, opportunity yeah. cost is just what is it costing me if you know it, it the there's this upfront this in your face cost. If I you know, if I buy a cheeseburger right for, for five dollars, it costs me five dollars, but it also costs me other things that I could have bought with that $5. I could have gotten a Bojangles chicken sandwich for $5, right? Instead of this cheeseburger, do you know? And, and so there are these opportunity costs. And so with, you know, with the, a $500 million spending that on a tax rebate, a one-time check. That for, for the vast majority of people is going to be a, a, a very small amount. I mean, right. don't get me wrong. Vast majority of us in Alabama need any kind of money that we can get frankly, uh, because we are a poor state and Alabama does its best to keep working class people poor. Right. So if, you know, the government wants to hand out checks, there's going to be plenty of us that are, you know, not super, uh, you know, terrified by that thought. But I think you're right in pointing out the opportunity cost. You know, 
what benefit will we gain from this one-time tax rebate as opposed to an investment such as this? Yeah, universal yeah. pre-K. How much more benefit could average people in Alabama realize from that kind of public investment uh, versus just cutting a one-time check? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, you know, th in this report, it, it comes to some pretty, you know, the, it comes to some pretty rosy conclusions. But, you know, there, there are some things in addition to the issue of not enough of our, you know, not enough of our pre-kindergarten age children having access to this. Uh, there are some other issues with with the program. right? Yeah. I mean, the first class program is very successful. And I want to you know, again, state that, uh, but it has a diverse delivery option, which means that those classrooms can be not just at public schools, but also at Head Start, which is fine, but also at child care centers and churches, which gets into a whole nother uh, can of worms. And the Alabama School Readiness Alliance, the Pre-K Task Force, it's a real who's who of corporate education reformers and business interest in the state. You know, think former state superintendents like Tommy Bice and, you know, the Business Council of Alabama. So I do understand the rationale behind the model, particularly as the state scales up, but I am definitely wary of it. And frankly, it just makes the most sense to me to prioritize adding these classrooms to our existing public schools, mm -hmm. you know, privatization concerns aside. You just saw a clip from the Valley Labor Report. We are live every Saturday morning from 9.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. And we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project. And you can do that on our website, tvlr.fm.